My name is Ilana Fetterman. I'm the Outreach Manager here at Friends of the Forest Preserves. We're so glad you joined us and hope you walk away with some new information about the nature and people that make the North Branch Forest Preserves amazing. We also hope you find some new inspiration to get outdoors and maybe even volunteer some of your time to help nature thrive there. Friends unites people to protect, promote, and care for the forest preserves in Cook County. As an independent nonprofit organization solely focused on the forest preserves in Cook County, we work tirelessly to safeguard and improve the 70,000 acres of forest preserves for all of us and generations to come. We're glad to see you all here virtually, though we'd much prefer to hang out with you outdoors. But we are happy to be able to connect with you any way we can. This evening's program is part four in a series of webinars Friends staff is hosting this summer in which we've been focusing on specific regions throughout the county to explore. Next Wednesday, August 5th is our final webinar in this series and we'll be exploring the Palos Preserves in Southwestern Cook County. Registration is available on our website for this webinar and Peter will send a link in the chat box with that registration link. Now, a few housekeeping notes before I turn it over to Derek Zomber, our presenter tonight. First, I'd like to introduce you to Peter Whitney, our Spring Creek field organizer. He's waving now. Hi, everyone. He will also Thanks for be joining. <laughs> He's our tech assistant tonight. If you have any issues, you can send him a direct message through the chat. Thank you, Peter. Second, we are going to mute everyone during the presentation, but we welcome questions throughout the presentation through the chat feature, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to type in a question at any point and I'll read them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Lastly, please be aware that this session is being recorded. So now I'll meet myself and hand it over to Derek, our North Branch Field Organizer at Friends of the Forest Preserves. Enjoy. Hey everyone, so let me just share my presentation. Okay, does everybody see my slides? Okay, so welcome to the hidden life of the forest preserves, North Branch. Uh, first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. That's me on the far left. I'm Derek Zomber. I grew up on the northwest side of the city, and it was during a time when kids still had a little bit of freedom to explore and uh, maybe get in trouble. And I always found myself attracted to the parks and the forest preserves for some reason. Um, but that's great because we have tons of forest preserves uh, on the North Branch near where I live on the Northwest side. Uh, so I started doing volunteer work at LaBelle Woods in 2017, um, you know, habitat restoration work. And now I work as a field organizer, helping to support volunteer work on the North Branch. And today we're gonna talk about the North Branch. Uh, first, I'll talk just a little bit about the uh, Friends of the Forest Preserves and Forest Preserves of Cook County. Then I'll take you on a trip back to the Ice Age in order to Understanding of the landscape and, and even why some of the plants and animals that we see on the North Branch are there. Uh, we'll also talk about what makes North Branch so special and a little bit about exploring the North Branch. Then we'll end it with how you can help North Branch in our Q&A session. So Friends of the Forest Preserves, um, this is a, a photo that kind of demonstrates what we're about. This is actually from the North, Northwest region at Spring Creek. And you know this shows our conservation core crews, adult crews that do work all year, as well as FPCC staff, Forest Preserve staff, uh, staff, and some of our partner organizations. And really, what we we care about the forest preserves, and we want to make a positive in, impact for them. Uh, we want more people to care about the preserves, and we know that there are many people out there. So we work with all those people, and we try to have the greatest impact as we can as a group. And a little bit about forest preserves, uh, at least one of you isn't familiar with them that much. Uh, most important, they're not a park district. So they're kind of similar. There are, uh, they have a lot of the amenities and the recreational opportunities that a park has, but most importantly, uh, 
it's about conservation, or maybe not most importantly, but it, they have a, a major focus on conservation. Park districts, they have a lot of nice natural areas, but their focus isn't necessarily on conservation. So it's really about conserving the land and educating people about the land. So the forest preserves cover about 70,000 acres, make, making it the largest county forest preserve system in the country. That's about 11% of the land, uh, which if you combined it, uh, the land of Cook County, um, if you combined it, that would cover about half of the city of Chicago. And I just circled the Palos region. If you compare that to the size of Indiana Dunes National Park, that's about the same size as that national park. 15,000 acres. So we're, we have quite a bit more land than Indiana Dunes, and we're also the oldest forest preserve system in the, count, uh, in the country. Uh, 1914 is when we were established, and that's two years before the National Parks Act. Uh, there's the North Branch that I just circled in the northeast part of the county. And something that's so awesome about Forest preserves is that you know it has such a diverse you know assemblage of different species of plants and animals. We are actually in the most diverse county in the entire state out of all those 102 counties. Uh, here's a map of of the endangered and threatened species that occur uh, in the state, and you'll see that northeastern Illinois has way more over 100 than even the southern part of the state, which you might have thought would have had more. But we're just in a really special spot thanks to what I'm going to talk about a little bit glaciers and uh, our proximity to Lake Michigan and the prairie, uh, tall grass prairie mosaic. And it's a good thing that we started saving this land because here's uh, public land survey data from the 1980s. Uh, you, if you've tuned in with us before, you've seen a lot of these slides, especially these maps, so you'll be familiar. Um, all that green and pink, that's natural area. And you can see that it starts to disappear. It, tur it turns from green and pink to red and yellow, which red is human settlement and yellow is agricultural field. By 1938, we have almost nothing. And by 2015, very little is left at all. And what exactly were in those little green and pink areas. So the pink is pretty simple. That's areas that were dominated by open wetlands. The lime green is pretty simple. That's just open prairies with almost no trees. When the public land surveyors were going out and doing these surveys, they noted if there were trees or not. And lime green would have been pretty much no trees. Oh, at all. So that's pretty much prairie. Uh, whereas the dark green, that's a little bit more complicated. That would have been a mixture of, of areas with scattered trees called savannas and areas with a little bit more trees called woodlands. Uh, both of them would have had plenty of grasses and wildflowers in the understory, but they wouldn't have been dominated by trees, um, which is very different from something else, which, you know, I, I didn't mention this yet, forests. You know, these are forest preserves. Why, why were there not forests in Cook County for the most part? Well, it has to do with people and fire, and it created what's called the tall grass prairie mosaic. So in our region, uh, which you could see here in, in this map, all that gray, uh, those are areas where fire was pretty frequent because of the climate was pretty dry, but it wasn't so that tall grasses and trees couldn't grow. Um, so what would end up happening is some areas would burn more than others and we would get areas that are tall grass prairie dominated by grasses with a, a few savannas and woodlands mixed in and then we would have the, the darker gray areas uh, on the edge, especially in the north and south, those would have been a mixture of woodland and savanna with prairies intermixed. And these fires would have been natural but they always but they also would have been set by Native Americans who would have been using fire as a tool for thousands of years by the time of the public land surveys. And here's a picture of a prescribed burn. Of course, Native Americans weren't uh, you know, decked out in all the protective gear, but they would have used fire similar to the way that this 
restoration practitioner. Um, and here I'll, uh, I'll display the land acknowledgement for the Forest Preserves of Cook County. Um, it's important to acknowledge that even though these public lands were being carved up as if they were you know, free for the taking, that doesn't mean that they weren't already occupied. You know, Northeastern Illinois was home to many Native American tribes and um, it's important that we recognize that. But to understand the landscape of Northeastern Illinois, we, we actually have to go quite a bit ways back. We actually have to go back to the Ice Age. And this is what it might've looked like about 75,000 years ago on the North Branch, or maybe in other parts of North America, we wouldn't have had the mountains. Uh, there probably would have been mastodons and American lions and dire wolves and giant slobs running around, saber-toothed cats. The climate would have been pretty similar to what we have today, maybe a little bit warmer, and no human had ever stepped foot in North America. But at some point it started to get a little bit colder, and at some point it started to snow somewhere in Canada, and that summer, the snow did not melt. This is not a blank slide, this is actually a blizzard. So it would have just continued to build up as the climate got a little bit cooler. And soon the snow would have built up to cover pretty much all of Canada and parts of northern, the northern United States. It would have reached about a mile to two miles high. And the weight of the snow would have been so heavy that it would have compacted the bottom layers into ice, and it would have even been heavier than that, it would have compacted the ice back into water. And this would have helped the ice kind of flow away from where it was accumulating in northern Canada. Uh, you could kind of think of it like um, pouring syrup on a flat surface. It, it'll flow slowly away from where you're pouring it, and it'll get pretty far away. And these ice sheets, as they moved, they actually would have picked up debris and they would have sort of bulldozed into the land. And I like to think of glaciers as a mixture between a bulldozer and a conveyor belt because some of this debris would have gotten caught up in the ice and it would have uh, gotten pushed forward. And then if the uh, glacier started to melt, all of that stuff would melt out and the debris would get left at the margin, the front end of the glacier. And at the bottom, you could see uh, this moraine, this ridge um, of debris that would have gotten laid down by the glacier. And that, that, that explains a lot of what we see in Northeastern Illinois, the topography and everything else. So the moraines in Illinois, you know, you can see these sort of arcs of white on the map. Those are tall ridges that have that occur where the glacier stayed in one spot for long enough for uh, debris to accumulate at the edge. Remember, this is kind of like a conveyor belt. So it might have been, it's still melting, but it's pushing out away from that center where it, where it, where the snow is, was accumulating. Um, and in areas where it wasn't staying in one spot for a long time, that's, those are the green areas it would have laid down sort of, you know, just a flat layer of debris. And it wouldn't have been hilly, it wouldn't have been arcing ridges, uh, hills. Um, so let's go a little bit more towards northeastern Illinois. And here we have um, all the moraines that were in northeastern Illinois, and you can kind of see it, we're blocked in in Cook County by moraines. And this is called the Lake Border Moraine System. And as the glacier melted, that water had to go somewhere, right? So it really didn't have anywhere to go because of all the moraines blocking it. And we end up with what's called Glacial Lake Chicago in blue. Um, and that lake would have also been eroding the, those moraines and depositing sandy dunes and beaches and clay in different spots. And it would have, the area where Lake Chicago was, which later turned into Lake Michigan once the glacier completely melted, uh, that would have been a flat plain. Whereas everything you see in, in this brownish tan color 
that would have been hilly moraines. Let's go even more zooming into the North Branch and we'll see that these moraines were little ridges and in between the ridges, that's where we had the different forks of the North Branch of the Chicago River. So Stokey River, the Middle Fork, and then the West Fork, which then met and once they reached Glacial Lake Chicago. And that explains the placement of, of, of our rivers in, on the North Branch. The Des Plaines River is also farther west, same story, different morning. So let's bring it all together now. Uh, fire would have traveled more e uh, easier over uh, the flat, dry areas and gently rolling terrain. And the glacial moraines and the large rivers would have created topography that blocked the fire. So fire, the prevailing winds would have pushed the fire to the east and the east so that means that the east side's rivers didn't really burn because the rivers blocked them and also the moraines created little pockets where plants could hide and animals could hide that didn't really like to be burned. And this is really why the North Branch is so special. We have a pretty diverse topography. Now I know people say Chicago's topography is kind of boring, the geology is not boring, and it actually creates really variable topography that when combined with fire, uh, creates a diverse natural communities. So higher, drier moraines, we have lakes and riv uh, larger rivers and floodplains. We have the flat, wet glacial lake plain, and we're not too far from the lake. So we even have some of the sandy remnants of beaches. We were really, we were a true, example of a mosaic of the tall grass prairie, maybe better than any area in the entirety of Cook County, if you ask me, but I'm a little bit biased. So where to begin? This sounds really awesome. We've got all this cool stuff going on, and I'd suggest going to the interactive map on the Forest Preserves of Cook County website. Uh, they have a really cool map. You can search for the North Branch Trail System, and you can look at what we have to offer. So uh, the North Branch Trail is about 37 miles total of marked and maintained trails um, along about 20, a 22 mile stretch of the Chicago River and its, and its different forks. 25 of it is paved and all of the official trails are open to dog walking, hiking, cross-country skiing, uh, biking, it's a great place for biking long distances or hiking long distances, but if you ask me, I think it's way cooler to use it as a base to sort of explore the rest of the North Branch. Um, and I'd really suggest that you take a chance to go onto some of these unmarked footpaths. But if you're gonna go off of the official trails, then uh, I'd really suggest you also tread lightly and leave no trace. So North Branch is about, it's the closest preserve to about 1.2 million people living in the city of Chicago. And that doesn't include people living in the Northern suburbs. So these are the closest preserves to millions of people. They get tons of visitors. And you know, with that much use, it, people can cause a lot of damage just walking around. So you know, plants can be sensitive to trampling, wildlife is sensitive to disturbance and also, because there are so many people, it's, it's just unsustainable to remove anything, any sort of plants or, or natural resources from the forest preserves. But I still really suggest you explore these little side trails that aren't official trails, not allowed to bike or bring your dogs on them. Uh, and, but I, and I would say if you do that, stay on, if you plan on staying on those trails, stay on them because the sides of the trails you know, they can be a little bit sensitive to trampling. Of course, they can also be muddy, so be prepared to walk through a little bit of mud. Um, and it is technically allowed to go off trails and tea, but do so very carefully. So we have 27 sites on the North Branch, and three of those sites are designated Illinois Nature Preserves, so they have special protection under the law because they're considered some of the highest quality examples of what's left. That's Harms Woods Nature Preserve, Harms Flatwoods, and Soul Prairie Nature Preserve. 
and only four of our sites don't have a parking lot nearby. So that makes the North Branch one of the most accessible regions of the entire county. You can find somewhere to access the trail from the city of Chicago on the northwest side all the way up through Northbrook. We also have Skokie Lagoons um, and the Botanic Garden is technically part of North Branch. So pick a spot. How do you pick a spot? Well, you can go back to that interactive map. You could choose what's closest to you. Maybe you live near uh, Blue Star Woods in, in Glenview and here's a map of that. Now I started off exploring what was close to me and you know that was on the north side of the city about 15 years ago and I would hike there and then hike around and I slowly made my way upstream at this point I've, I haven't explored only four of the sites on the north branch out of, the, out of those 27 I mentioned and uh, but to be honest some areas are nicer than others some you're going to see better wildlife or better flowers and I learned it all by trial and error but I'm going to share with you some of the spots that I thought I wish somebody told me about when I was a kid or that as I've been exploring really had the biggest impact on me. You know, I, I go to the forest preserves, I'm kind of looking for, you know, a, maybe a wilderness experience, which we don't really have much wilderness left in Cook County anymore, really none. But there are areas that you can go to in the Cook County Forest Preserves, on North Branch, where even if there's people sharing the trail with you, you will feel like you're maybe looking at what Chicago was like 200 years ago when it was still pretty much wilderness. So first, first place, if you wanna see woodlands, I suggest Harmswood Nature, Nature Preserve. Um, it's a hilly area, it's morainal, it's cut by a bunch of small streams and ravines. It can be wet in places in the spring especially, but it's not as wet as some of the other sites. Here we have uh, st the steward of the site, John, Bell Band with, with a aspiring steward, Katie Miller, taking a stroll through the woods. I think this is one of the greatest places on the North Branch to see spring wildflowers. It is a nature preserve, um, so keep that in mind. It's one of the highest quality remnant woodlands perhaps in the whole state, and it is just carpeted with spring wildflowers such as the, these trilliums, large flower trilliums that are great for insects, this will be some of the first nectar it's going to get all year long. Or these uh, trout lilies, which, you know, the whole area can be carpeted with a diverse mixture of, of great wildflowers. Also has a lot of giant oaks. So it's a pretty cool place to look for different types of mushrooms, like this uh, coral mushroom right here. I'd suggest parking at a place that's officially called Glenview Woods on the map. Uh, look for this bridge to the southwest and you'll know you're getting close if you see this tree. Uh, that's a giant burl that's about at least 12 foot feet in circumference and the inside is hollow. So very distinct and an interesting feature. And if you're looking for prairie, I'd suggest waters meet woods. Here's one of the prairie areas of Waters Meat Woods with prairie dock and, and tick tree foil and rattlesnake master and all sorts of little plants mixed in there, such as, you know, you, if you're lucky, you might find some Michigan lilies around or these amazing fringed gentians, bright blue color, very rare color in, in the plant world. And you can see, you can see all those plants in other sites on the North Branch, but you know, this is a, a spot where, you know, you'll find them relatively easy and many others. Uh, now, this plant might not look like much, but this plant is actually one of the biggest reasons why Waters Meat Woods still exists, why the prairies at Waters Meat Woods still exist. This was a, uh, this is a plant that had never been seen in the entire state until volunteers Founded at Waters Meat Woods, and then they know knew the spot was really special. So this was in the 90s. Found this handsome sedge. It looks like a weird little grass, and it is. It's a state endangered plant, and because of that, 
luckily some some volunteers took on the responsibility and and the privilege of being the stewards of of waters meat so here's eileen sutter on the on the left and john berg on the right um and i'm grateful that they decided to uh manage this prairie and keep it from disappearing because believe it or not that beautiful prairie that i showed you and the prairie in the background on the right that would have been that almost disappeared it almost disappeared in a sea of invasive buckthorn and other shrubs so luckily they recognized that i think it's also a great place to see wildlife one of the best places in the entire on the entire north branch if you ask me so here we have a one of our pet red tail hawks. And after, during or after every volunteer work day, we get one or two red tail hawks that come and visit us, looking to see if we scared up any, any rodents. They've been nesting on the site for years, and they've learned that we are a good way to find food. And you can see at the bottom of that picture, there's a, a big fire that's, you know, a brush pile where we, we burn this buckthorn that we we cut and this invasive brush. Of course, our, uh, these brush piles are uh, they're licensed and people tending them are trained by the forest preserves to make sure that they don't get out of hand. Uh, we also have two years ago or, or a year or so ago, a great horned owl. Maybe they've been there longer, but, but we saw this great horned owl in a giant nest and they don't really, they don't actually make their own nests. So they steal nests. It, this owl probably stole the red-tailed hawk's nest and they had to find another one. And then about three years ago, we had uh, a few dozen herons, great blue herons, decide to make a rookery at Waters Mead. And this, this is a, a photo by Lisa Musgrave, one of our volunteers on the North Branch. Um, Great photo and one of the many dozens of, of nests and, and birds that have nested in that rookery. And sadly this year, we couldn't find the owls at first and we were seeing less herons and we weren't sure what was going on. And it turns out that the owls decided to nest with the herons. So they nest earlier, they got there before the herons got there. And when the herons came, they most of them didn't want to nest by the owls. And these are some, some baby owlets that are uh, sometimes referred to as hoppers that were seen on the North Branch uh, called hoppers because after they fledge, they, uh, they can't fly, but they'll hop around from branch to branch and still be fed by the parents. And I think that this was just such a cool story. Um, really, you know, you, it, it makes wildlife seem like you know a, a drama or or some kind of documentary. And that's one of the the coolest things about volunteering. I think you know you get to be out there frequently and and see this type of stuff unfold. Another thing about waters me and one of the reasons why I think so much of these so many of these cool plants and and animals have stuck around is because waters meet woods is a pretty remote site. Um, there actually is no parking lot. This is one of those that has no parking lot. You have to park to the north uh, uh, in the neighborhood if you want to go there. And the trail in red on the, on the edge of this map, that is the, that's a paved trail, but it really goes along the perimeter. So the interior is mostly untouched by people. Uh, in green, on the northeast of this map, you can see, uh, that's a footpath, so you can walk through these prairies where you might not see anybody except for perhaps a volunteer out there doing some work. Um, you can also walk through a really nice woodland and, and savanna. You know, Waters Meat Woods is not just a prairie. And I would say that for me, this is the place that I go to on the North Branch if I want to find solitude. But I'm willing to share it with everybody else. So. Um, yeah, I, I really highly recommend this as a, as a hike. Be aware that it can be pretty wet. Um, and interestingly enough, that yellow star in the center, if you go there, you, are, you have to walk at least 933 feet 
to any sort of human structure or property lines or a trail or anything like that. So it's, you know, it's one of the most remote areas of, on the entire North Branch. You can go farther Northwest, you can go to the Palos region, different areas of the county have bigger preserves, but if you wanna find solitude on the North Branch, I'd say this is the place to go. I'll also mention some of the special communities on the North Branch, uh, Oak Savannas, floodplains and flatwoods. Uh, it was probably once the most common type of community, Oak Savannas, where you know areas of scattered trees dominated by oaks. They would have had a mixture of prairie and woodland species, as well as savanna specialists. So they would have had plants that you're not gonna find in the prairies or the woodlands. So they could be really diverse. And you know, the people say the prairies are really dwindling and there aren't that many left. There's only 1% of the prairie remaining. Well, oak savannas, there's only about 0.1% of the original oak savanna remaining, which means that they're, they're technically more in, endangered. And it's, it's really great that we have all this work going on on the North Branch to restore these oak savannas. Um, I'd say there are a few cool spots to look at savannas on the North Branch. Miami Woods and, and parts of Bunker Hill, they probably have nicer savannas than Blue Star Woods. But I want to mention Blue Star because it's a, a really great success story for volunteer work. This area that's filled with red cardinal flowers and blue, great, lobe, great blue lobelias, an obedient plant, you know, the pink flowers, that was all buckthorn just maybe five or six years ago. And it used to be the site of Camp Skokie, um, a Civilian Conservation Corps camp, a POW camp, and then a Girl Scout camp. And it was, most of it was, was beyond recognition. And volunteers removed all the brush, seeded it, and this is what we have in a lot of spots now. So I think it's a great testament to what happens when volunteers work in the, on the North Branch. And uh, it's all led up by Rep. You can see him on the far right. Prentice Stewart Rep with some volunteers at Blue Star Woods. Uh, I'll also mention floodplains. Floodplains, uh, I think the best example is going to be Laval Woods, which is on the northwest side of the city. And that's where I got my start as a young kid exploring the forest preserves and as a volunteer. So floodplains, they form by erosion as, the, as a river meanders through a valley, and they're really important for flood control. For all of you people living on the northwest side of the city, if you live pretty close to the river especially, you might get flooding basements and all that. And, you know, these floodplains are a major way that, to help control flooding. They have such a positive impact for that. You know, there's so much more we could do, but, but just preserving floodplains is one of the best ways to prevent flooding in urban areas. Uh, they can also have these little cutoff river channels that are called oxbow sloughs, which are a really unique feature of, of larger floodplains like what we have at the Baw Woods. But they do have their issues with flooding and uh, flood scouring and, and invasive species. So this is Laval Woods in the spring, and it looks really beautiful. It's a it's a carpet of green and yellow, but this is not a healthy floodplain. Or you know, for the most part, that yellow and green is is not a sign of health. That's an invasive species called lesser celandine. And while green's up spring and it looks great, we, we don't want it. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to deal with it at this point. Here's another picture, more or lesser celandine, but now we're approaching uh, an oxbow, one of these little areas that used to be part of the river, but is now cut off from the main channel. That's a little bit later in the spring, with the leaves emerging. Here's approaching it even closer in the, in the summer, and here's in the middle of the summer, during the driest part of the year. And this might not look great. It might, it looks a little bit barren, but this is actually something we really like to see in our floodplains, a large oxbow slough that might become an ephemeral, it's, it's more of an ephemeral pond. It might become completely dry in the summer. It provides great habitat for amphibians, 
and um, birds love it. We get tons of herons in these types of areas. A lot of special types of, of wetland plants that like these muddy areas that dry out. You can find them in there. So I think this is one of the coolest spots in all of the Vaughan Woods. We call it the slough and it's pretty easy to access. And, you know, even though it's, it's right in the city and we get tons of people uh, visiting it, here's a white-tailed deer um, and there's tons of deer. We don't necessarily want tons of white-tailed deer, but we have them. And it's a great place to see them, but it's an even better place to see mink. So this is a picture by Jeff Scretney, one of our volunteers at Laval Woods. And here's another picture of a mink. This, this little guy got a meal, muskrat and they've been spreading on the North Branch, and we have a few of them that, that you know, have, make dens every year for the past few years at Laval Woods. They're very secretive creatures, but you know, if you look for them, then you will find them, especially you know, early, early in the morning is probably the best time, and, and this picture with the muskrat, that was taken by Kelly Ballantyne, one of our uh, people on the North Branch. It's also an amazing place for migrating birds. We have over 40 different species of warblers, like these little colorful types of birds that you see. Um, we've recorded, I think, 43 at Bubal Woods. On the right is a prothonotary warbler, and on the left is a black Bernian warbler. Just beautiful little creatures, and they really only show up during the during the spring and the fall, during the migration season. So you have to get out during the right time. May is the best time for those. We also do um, a lot of shrub habitat restoration at Laval Woods. So it's a pretty unique thing that we have on the North Branch and, and at Laval in general. One of our giant work days, we need all hands on deck for this type of work where we plant native shrubs to support the migrating birds after we've removed the invasive shrubs. And you know you might have noticed all that fencing in the picture. Well, we have to fence the the plants when we plant them, the shrubs when we plant them, because the deer will destroy them if we do not. And inside of this fence is a bunch of a beautiful spring wildflower called blue phlox. And outside of the cage, it is obliterated. It's a dense carpet, and that that just kind of demonstrates you know, what deer do, they're beautiful creatures, but they do cause a lot of issues on the North Branch. And we also have a really cool community of people on the North Branch who are part of a citizen science initiative uh, that's on a website called inaturalist.org. It's a website and an app that uses photo recognition to help you ID plants and animals and other wildlife. And you can upload your photos to the website other people will look at your photos and help you help identify them. Um, sometimes the computer, the, the, the artificial intelligence, the recognition software is a little bit off, but don't worry, people will correct you if you're wrong. And you don't have to be right. You can just put it up there and it's, it's valuable for helping us learn what's at our different sites. So at Laval Woods, we have 1,034 species of plants and wildlife that have been recorded on the site thanks to the dozens of people who go out and just photograph plants and animals. And they really help us understand what we're seeing. And it's just a cool way to learn about what's on the North Branch and, and a great in-depth way to explore. Also, <clears throat> I'll also mention flatwoods. They're a type of upland woodland um, or savannah. They're wet in the spring and fall. And they, that's because they have clay below the soil. That goes back to Glacial Lake Chicago, which laid down a lot of clay, but they might dry out in the summer. Here's what they might look like late in the winter. Here's what they might look like, you know, in, in the middle of, su of the summer. And it doesn't look like much. It looks like it's really pretty. You can see a little bit of a pond, see all this grassy stuff. But if you were to look closely at what's there, there are at least two dozen different species of grasses and these other plants called sedges that have some, these, a lot of them have large complex seed heads that are spiky. There are over a hundred different types in Illinois alone and maybe 
maybe close to that on the North Branch alone, or in northeastern Cook County at the very least. So here are some examples on the far right is uh, left is fringe sedge. Um, this in the middle is hop like sedge. Uh, and then on the far right is is grazed sedge, which looks like a little little mace. And those are all, you know, at least an inch and a half to five inches long. So they're really cool. And if you start looking for them in these flatwoods areas, you'll find a lot of them. And if these are, th these flatwoods are a very special feature of North Branch. You don't find them in many other regions of Northeastern Cook County. Here's a, a work day, a recent work day at the flatwoods. Um, it's socially distant work day. And I'll say so right now, volunteer work is on hold. It's not open to the public. These are all experienced volunteers who have been mostly doing this work for a long time. We're, we can't wait to be able to work with a broader group of people. Um, if you wanna learn more about when volunteer work is more open to the public, sign up for my email list um, or email me directly and I'll let you know when there are opportunities to work. Again, uh, these forest preserves really rely on the work that volunteers do and we wanna work with you again. So if you wanna get involved, you know, the North Branch Restoration Project has been working on the North Branch for over 40 years. A lot of great experience, a lot of knowledge. You know, it, and what's interesting is the North Branch is where this community-based volunteer habitat restoration work, where it basically started. We are almost the prototype for the entire world. Uh, so that's really cool. And we have, during you know, normal circumstances, we would have volunteer work days on most weekends out of the year. We also do nature walks and other events, uh, especially in, in partnership with our partners, which include the Forest Preserves of Cook County and the uh, Friends of the Chicago River. But until the time that you can do, we can have more people volunteering, um, I'd suggest just get out there and photograph plants and wildlife and be part of this citizen science, you know, make an iNaturalist account and help us, you know, document what's on the North Branch. Uh, or just go out, explore and appreciate what's out there and be an advocate. You know, if, if nobody cares about the forest preserves, then they're not going to survive. It's not just about volunteers getting out there and doing the work. It's about people going out there to the North Branch and caring about it. And, you know, when the opportunity arises, you know, showing that they care. And I'll close with that. Uh, please give me, uh, give me your questions. And if you want to email me directly or sign up for my email list, here's my email address uh, or call me or um, you can look up on iNaturalist and I can maybe help you identify some stuff that you post there. And thanks for listening and we'll go to questions. Yeah, thanks, Derek. That was great. Um, we've got about five minutes for questions and uh, I've got a couple already, but please keep adding them to the chat box. And if we don't get to any tonight, we will email you directly with an answer. Um, we'll start off with Francine G. She's asking, is Waters Meet easy to access? say it's not it's not intuitive to access as I mentioned you have to park on in the neighborhood so I and I suggest you know just be be um, considerate of, of the neighbors and but yeah you have to park to the north of of waters meet to get in and then from there you know there's that paved trail on the far east side that's really easy and that's actually a great place to explore that's where you get the easiest views of, of the Heron Rookery, but the prairie itself, that's on the far west side, it's a little bit more difficult to access. I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it, it takes a little bit more work. All right, from Pat M, we have, are there any beaver dens on the North Branch? Ooh, beaver dams. No, no, we don't have any beaver dams currently. 
it's interesting. There are beavers on farther south. Uh, so if you go to Ronan Park, which is not part of the North Branch Preserves, it's part of the park district, um, there's, there are a lot of beavers there. I don't know where they have their lodges, but you can see evidence. And maybe at some point they'll move upstream into forest preserves in Cook County. Uh, I know in Lake County there are some. There are some on the Des Plaines River, so maybe in the future, but not at this point, not, not in our forest preserves. All right, from David C, we have, what are the rare plants found at Waters Meat Woods? And I know that we, want, we don't want to necessarily divulge where endangered species can be found, um, but if you want to talk to some rare plants that one might see. Yeah, there, what's interesting is there's a lot of rare plants and there, some of them are just barely hanging on. Some of them are, of course, they're doing a lot better since the 90s when volunteers started working to, uh, preserve them. Um, you know, I mentioned that that sedge, that, you know, the handsome sedge, you know, you have to be looking really hard to find it. And that fringe gentian, that's another great one. But I would say um, there is one interesting plant that's found nowhere else on the North Branch, skunk cabbage. It's, it's an early, the earliest spring wildflower. It likes little seepy areas where groundwater is coming out of the ground or seeping out close to the surface. And you can find it a lot more commonly in along the Des Plaines or the Fox River, but we don't have it very much in Cook County on the North Branch. And that is, that's a pretty rare plant for us. And there's some other special seepage plants. And that's an area that we do a lot of restoration work as well and has other plants. So. You know, in the future, you could always come to a work day and that's one of the favorite things we like to look at uh, when we go out there, you know, in the early spring or even in the winter, they start coming up very early. They'll actually come up before the snow is melted and they'll actually melt the snow. So it's a really cool plant. Come to a work day. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we've got a couple questions. Um, regarding ticks and poison ivy. So Barbara S. wants to know how bad are the ticks this year along the foot trails? And Jim O. wants to know of any areas of poison ivy. So can you give us a heads up if we're heading out in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, um, ticks are variable. So some sites I've never seen a tick. Some I've seen a tick, but I've never had one on me. Um, if you're in, in all of the Chicago, Northwest Chicago area preserves, those don't really have any, have any ticks that I know of. Now, I can't guarantee that you won't get one. If you go farther north, there are ticks. Waters Meat does have ticks. But what I'll say is they're not that big of an issue. I've never seen a deer tick. I've never heard of deer ticks. They're the ones that have Lyme disease that you have to worry about. And really, if you see a tick on you, pick it off real quickly. If you get it before it, even if it embeds within, you know, like I've heard 16, I've heard 24 hours, but you know, even if it's just eight hours, you shouldn't leave a tick on for eight hours. If it's only on for a short period of time, it's not going to be an issue. So just check yourself when you get home and you won't have any issues with ticks. That's what I'll say about that. Or stay a little bit farther south and you're less likely to get a tick farther south on the North Branch, not necessarily farther south in the county. And poison ivy, it's kind of just something you have to learn to live with. Wear long pants uh, and don't, and learn how to identify it. We have a lot of it in different spots. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's along the trails. One of the cool things about poison ivy is that it hates fire. So areas where we have described burns more frequently, you don't get as much poison ivy. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a plus for prescribed burning. And there's also some evidence that ticks are decreased by prescribed burning. So, yeah, just learn how to identify it and wear long pants and you'll be fine. And then just don't, and then don't touch it. But we've got a lot of it. Okay, I want to squeeze in two more questions because they're both really important. Um, first of all, Pat, uh, Pam S. asks, can I transplant wild hardwood trees from my yard to the forest preserve? Can you address that? No, 
You can, I, I can address it. Yes, I can address it. You, you cannot. Uh, we, for, there are seed policies in place that, um, that Cook County has. Uh, we we want to preserve the remnant plant species in the forest preserves. We don't want you know plants from people's gardens where we don't know where the plants came from. And while even if it's a, a wild oak tree, you know that's great. We want more oaks. We're having issues with oaks because of deer eating the saplings before they can get big enough to uh, you know withstand the deer. But there's just, there are just too many variables involved. Um, you don't necessarily know what you're planting that hardwood tree on top of. You might be planting it on top of some rare, threatened, or endangered plant species. Um, and then it's just, it's just something we, we can't really allow in a place like Cook County. There's just too many people, even if, you know, you have the best of intentions. If you want to help, you know, like I said, in the in the future volunteer work or contact me to learn more about how you can get involved. Yeah, we did talk about the wild gardeners. The wild what? All right, in 30 seconds, can you tell us your favorite walk or hike through the North Branch Forest Preserves? My favorite walk or hike through the North Branch Forest Preserves. Oh boy. So I, I talked about Waters Meat. That's a that's a really cool hike. That, that is why I mentioned it. It might not be my favorite. Um, I think my favorite hike might be at Bunker Hill Forest Preserve. And you can, if you hike on the paved trail, it's an amazing spot. It's been under restoration for 40 years. It's one of the original North Branch sites. So it is just amazing with wildflowers and rare different types of plants and animals. And you know that just on the trail, the paved trail alone, the North Branch Trail, that's great. Um, and then there are footpaths that go off of from there. I would say they're amazing as well. And just uh, you know, be careful if you're going to explore them because you know it's a fragile ecosystem. But I'd say that's probably my favorite place to hike around. All right. That's all the time we have left. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for Thanks joining. For out, everyone. Yeah, if we didn't get to your question today, we'll be sure to follow up with you. Please do reach out to us with any questions or ideas that you might have. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight and we hope to be able to see you out in the field sometime soon. But in the meantime, we'll keep in touch via email, social media, through our website, fotfp.org and more webinars like the one next week. Friends is a membership-based organization, so if you feel inspired to join us as a member or make any donation to support our work, Peter will pop our donation link into the chat or visit fotfp.org. Thank you all so much. Take care. Good night. Bye. It's on you. Then...